Hi guys, my name is Nick O'Leary and this week we are looking at a topic called Android Auto. Following on from Apple CarPlay video I made several months ago, it's been requested quite a lot that I do one on Android Auto. So we're doing that this week and at the end we'll go through a few tips and tricks. So I hope you enjoy. So guys, you've probably wondered what Apple CarPlay or Android Auto is, or even the word smartphone integration. Uh, quite simply, in a car, you have a multimedia system which houses your, your phone, sat-nav, and even allows you to play your music to the, through the car speakers. So basically, you can use this system, or alternatively, you can use either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, depending on your phone make. And it's kind of an alternative to the car system. Now to plug it into Mercedes-Benz vehicles, you quite simply plug it in via the USB ports. However, if you have MBUX, which is the new Hey Mercedes, you will need to get one of these. Now I have recommended this one, which you can get off Amazon, which I've just put in a link in the description down below. It's basically called a USB-C to USB adapter. They're really, really small. You just use this and the cable you would normally use to charge your phone and plug it directly in. Now, of course, as there are so many different models, do just double check the specification of your Mercedes-Benz just to see if it has the capability of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Just check with your local Mercedes-Benz dealership and they can let you know. In terms of Apple CarPlay, I've already made a video on this. So if you click on the pop-up banner up above, that will take you straight to that video. But today we're gonna to focus on Android Auto. So guys, once you know that your car has smartphone integration or Android Auto, quite simply just grab your phone and make sure it's unlocked and then just simply plug it in. Now plug it into the car, there'll be a USB port either in this area here or down here. And once you've plugged it in, you'll get a few messages appear up on the screen and on your phone. So on the screen here, it says to start Android Auto for the first time, please park the vehicle and follow the instructions on your phone. So on here, we basically allowing the car to access a few things on your phone. It's just asking for a few permissions. So these things will include microphone, location, phone, call log, SMS, contacts, and even your calendar as well. So I'm just going to allow that one. And then up on the screen, you'll find Android Auto will launch straight away onto Google Maps or even the home screen. So now, as we've allowed everything, we don't need that phone anymore. So I'm just going to pop him in there and close, close this up. And then quite simply, this is how Android Auto looks. So the menu button is on the bottom right. So when you press this, it will take you to the main home screen. And these are all the apps that are compatible with Android Auto. And there are a few more you can download on the Google Play Store. So obviously, if you park safely on the side of the road and have a quick look, or even at home on your Wi-Fi, have a look on the Google Play Store and have a look under the Android Auto section and you'll be able to see some sp specific apps that are designed for Android Auto. So if we go through all of these apps just one by one, so to start we have Google Maps. Now this is literally Google Maps which is running directly off of your phone. So quite simply if I just tap on the top left hand corner, you'll notice that this shows me all the recent destinations that I've been to and you can actually search for more on the very, very top. So if I literally just tap on this one here, it will show you the approximate time of arrival and has already started the route guidance. So it basically just will navigate you there automatically. I've got the voice muted at the moment, but you can enable the voice, which is just on the top right hand corner of the, uh, the green bit where the next directions are. So going on to the next app, you'll find that this says Spotify. Now this can be swapped out for another music provider of your choice. In this one, I've just left it as it is. These are all the default apps. But um, if you go to Spotify, this is how you can obviously play music through the car system or maybe another music provider like YouTube Music or something. Now, when you're connected via Bluetooth, you are limited in a car to either going forward a track or back a track. And that's it. On Spotify and Android Auto, you can actually browse all of your music. So any music I've saved in the library here or recently played, playlists, artists, albums, you can browse them all on the screen. So it's quite clever how you can view them up on the screen and it's just a little bit more feature rich than just connecting it via Bluetooth and changing the track. 
going back to home, if I tap the circle button again. So if you're a podcast enthusiast, you can just go onto here and you can see all of the episodes you may have downloaded or even saved and any new ones that have just popped up uh, that have just been published. Simply tap on those and it will start playing straight away. Going back to the menu button here. So connecting phone is obviously the most important bit where you go onto phone here and you can make calls on call history or contacts or even just manually dial a number. But obviously when you're driving, you can answer and hang up on the button on the steering wheel here. Going back to the menu button on the bottom right, you'll notice there's an exit with a Mercedes logo. This quite simply takes you back to the Mercedes system. So if I swipe this left and right, I can maybe change the ambient lighting or any car specific settings. But if you want to go back to Android Auto, just tap Android Auto up here and it'll take you straight back to where you left off. Next up we've got settings, so if I go to settings you can change a few things such as the message notifications. So if you receive a text while driving it will actually show you the message uh, who it's from on the screen and you can turn this off if you wish just in case you don't want to be distracted by anyone. And if I go down the page just a little bit more you can see automatically resume media is on. What this means is when you plug in your phone and connect up Android Auto it will automatically play the music from where you left off before. Uh, if you don't want it to do this, you can obviously switch this off and it will just start silently. The last app on here is YouTube Music. Um, I don't have an account for YouTube Music, so it won't show anything on the screen. But if you are a subscriber or you do use this service, you can go on here and obviously very similar to Spotify, browse your music on the screen and play it all through the car. So guys, tips and tricks. The most important thing, and at the very top of those tips and tricks, I would definitely say is the Google Assistant. Much like Siri on iPhone and Apple products, the Google Assistant can really, really help you behind the wheel. And even if you don't use it on your phone, because it might be a bit silly to use it at home or anything, behind the wheel, it's a lifesaver, because obviously, not officially meant to use your phone behind the wheel, but if it's all built in and you have a Google Assistant or Siri or something like that to help, it's great. So to activate Google Assistant in the car, there's a picture of a microphone on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Quite simply press this and give it a command of what you want to say. Navigate to Bournemouth. Navigating to Bournemouth. And to be honest, I think that's probably even quicker than I could type it. So we're already navigating there and it's going to tell me it's uh, 18 minutes to get there. Uh, 10 past 10, I arrive and 5.9 miles. So it's very, very quick. So next up on the list is settings for Android Auto. And no, it's not the settings on the actual screen here. It's actually settings on the phone. So if we go onto here, if I just grab the phone out, uh, what you'll need to do is obviously unlock your phone and then go down to swipe up from the bottom, go to settings and then go to Google. If you scroll down the page just a little bit, you'll find device connections and then a thing called Android Auto. In here is how you can change a few things which affect how it works on the screen. So once you're in this menu here, uh, a few things you can do, you can actually go to previously connected cars and you can delete or forget previous cars and even rename them if, if you have a few. Under this you have customized launcher. So customized launcher is actually the app layout on the screen. So what I can do is say if I, I didn't really use the Mercedes exit button, I could potentially put him all the way down at the bottom and say I didn't use YouTube music. Uh, basically you just have to restart Android Auto for these settings to take effect. So if you unplug it, plug it back in, because I've already done that setup before, it's just gonna launch straight away with my new layout. So if I tap on the menu button, you'll see that my icons have now moved around to my preferred layout. Next up, we've got the Hey Google detection. And as you can see, it's just picked up the two words there. So I'm gonna press cancel, but you can go into this menu here and actually turn off this feature. So it won't do that. And um, but obviously it is quite good to activate that feature, you know, without even having to press a button in the car. So um, just depends whether it works for you or not. And then just underneath that, we have a few settings for notifications. 
Um, there is also an option here for wireless Android Auto. Uh, as of uh, August and September 2020 that we're in right now, uh, the date that this was filmed, uh, Mercedes-Benz don't offer a wireless uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto system. Uh, who knows in the future if something will happen like that, but at the moment it does have to be plugged in. I guess the benefits for this is that it does charge your phone. So by the time you get to your destination, also you have a fully charged phone. But um, we just have to keep an eye out for that through the future. I haven't seen anything about wireless being added to the cars, but um, who knows? We'll just have to keep an eye out. And there we go, guys. That concludes today's video on Android Auto on your Mercedes-Benz. Now, most importantly, just make sure that your actual phone is compatible with Android Auto. So if you're not sure, just do a quick internet search. I've put a little link in the description down below as well, taking you to the Android Auto website, and it does list a few on there as well. Don't forget as well, obviously, if you have the MBUX system with Hey Mercedes like this EQC here, um, you'll need the USB-C to USB adapter to plug your phone in. If you liked today's video, do hit that like button down below and subscribe and turn on that little bell notification to get a notification when I upload a new video on a Friday at four o'clock. Until next week, we'll see you all then.